All right then, gang. So the next big topic I want to discuss is inheritance. And inheritance is actually a pretty simple concept in programming once you get your head around it. In a nutshell, inheritance is when one class inherits properties and methods from another class. A bit like in real life, a child inherits properties from a parent like the eye color or the skin color or something. And it's the same in programming. We can have one class inherit things from another class. So say for example, we have some new class that we've created and we want to inherit from another class that we already have so that that new class has all the same properties and methods as the class it's inheriting from. Now, that new class could also have additional unique properties of its own. And an example of this would be, take our user class, let's create an admin user which inherits from that user class. The admin user should have all the same properties as a regular user, username and email. It should also have the same method, add friend, but it should also have an additional method or props of its own. For example, a method to remove other users or a property to define the level of admin that that user is. Now, if we were to do this, we could create a brand new class from scratch and add all of the same properties and methods that a normal user has to it plus the extra methods, but this is gonna to lead to code duplication and that's gonna make things harder to maintain in the future. So instead what we could do is inherit the properties and methods from the user class. So we could have our user class and then say, okay, well, we'll create this admin user class and that is gonna inherit from the user class. Therefore, I'm gonna take all of the current properties and methods on this class and I'm going to automatically inherit them as well. So we don't need to redefine them on this new admin user class. But I also want that extra property down here, admin level. So I'll just add that to this class. And therefore, when we create a new user using this class, we're creating a new admin user object and it's going to have these original properties that all users have and that the admin user inherits but also this additional admin level property right here. So that is inheritance in action. Now, if we wanted to, more than one class can inherit from another class. For example, we could also have a third class called moderator, which also inherits from the user class. And that means it's gonna have all the same properties and methods, username, email, and add friend, but also we could define an additional method called report user on this moderator class and only moderators would have that. So any object created with this class would have all these properties and the report user method. Now, another way of saying all this is that a parent class could have multiple subclasses or multiple child classes. So we'd call this a parent and maybe a child or a subclass. So now we know a little bit of the theory behind inheritance. Let's have a crack at this in our code. Okay then, so let's try creating a new admin class which inherits from this user class right here. So the first thing we need to do is define that class. So underneath this class, I'll say class and then admin user. You can call it just admin if you want to. I'm gonna call it admin user. And then when we inherit from another class, we say what we want to inherit from by saying extends and then which class we're inheriting. So that's gonna be the user. So we're saying here that the admin user class is gonna extend the user class and therefore it's gonna inherit all of this stuff inside the user class, the properties and also the functions. So what if I now come down here and say, well, okay, now we have user three and that is gonna be equal to a new admin user this time. So this time we're creating a new instance of this class. We still want this user, this admin user to have a username and an email. So we'll pass those in. So let me pass in Yoshi and then Yoshi at the net ninja dot code at UK like so, because again, the admin user is gonna have all of the same properties and methods as a regular user. So we're passing those properties in and we want them to be set. Now, what's gonna happen here because we don't have a constructor method inside this class right here. So when we make a new admin user, it's looking at this and it's not gonna find a constructor, but that's okay because when it creates this admin user, it looks in here and it doesn't find a constructor. And then it says, okay, well, does this extend or inherit from another class? And it does. So it goes to that class instead and it fires the constructor inside here where we take that username, we take the email and we set those properties. So this is still gonna work, even though we don't have a constructor inside this class. And I'm gonna demo that. I'm gonna say now, 
user three. And what we'll do first is get the username and we need to echo this. So let me place echo in front of it. Echo and then we'll concatenate with a BR tag. So it goes to the next line and I'm just gonna copy this dude right here and paste it down below a couple of times because now what we're gonna do is also get the email. Now remember, we can't just say email like this because that is a private property. We need to use this method, get email, which we inherit because it extends user. So we can use that. So we'll say get email. And in fact, that's all we're gonna do for now. We're not gonna do this third one down here. So let's get rid of that. And if I save this now and I'll refresh over here, then we can see Yoshi and Yoshi at the netninja.co.uk. So this works. We're passing the information in. It's not finding a constructor inside this class. So it goes to the parent class and it fires a constructor there. It fires that and it sets those properties. Okay. So now we're inheriting from this user class, but at the minute, this is kind of useless because it doesn't have any extra properties or any extra methods. So what if we also want inside this admin user class, an extra property called level. So let's make this public for now and call it level. And this will just be like the level of authorization this admin has ranging from, I don't know, zero to five or something like that. So it will be an integer. And what we need to do now is pass that property in when we say we want a new admin user. So after the email, we could say something like five because we want this to have a ninja level or rather an admin level of five. So we're passing it in right here, but at the minute it's not gonna get set because what's happening is we're calling this to create a new admin user. It's not finding a constructor. It's going up here to set up those properties. And right here, we're not actually setting that level property because regular users don't have a level property. So in order to do this, we have to make a new construct function down here inside admin user to set that property. So let's do that. I'm gonna say public and then function and then underscore underscore construct. And inside here, we wanna take all three of these things. We can't just take the one thing and call it level because now when we say we want a new admin user, it's gonna to come to this class and it's gonna find this construct function and it's gonna fire that and it's gonna take all three of these arguments in. So we have to define all three of them here. So I'm gonna say, first of all, username, and then we also want the email and we want the level. Now inside this construct function, we want to set this property here. So I'm gonna say this, and then level is now equal to the level parameter we take in. Make sense? And now we can try echoing that out down here. So let me copy this and paste it down here. So we want the level right here. Save it and I'll refresh and you'll notice two things. First of all, we get the level, that's fine. So we've set this property that we take in right here and now we can access that. But these two right here, they're not actually outputting anything. And why is that? Well, now that we have a construct function inside this class over here, it's overriding this one. So no longer when we create a new admin is it coming to this class and saying, well, okay, you don't have a constructor, so I'll use this one up here instead. It's not doing that anymore. It's finding a constructor function and it's only firing this one. If we have one here, it doesn't fire the one in the parent class. So we need a way to set these two properties. Now, what we could do is we could create those properties down here again. So public and then email and then, you know, public username or private email and public username. But that kind of defeats the point of inheriting those properties. So I don't want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is find a way to call this up here from this constructor so that we set the level first of all, then we call the parent constructor to set the other properties. And we can do that. The way we do that is by saying, first of all, parent, and then double colon, and then we want to call the construct method. So this parent keyword right here refers to the parent class, in our case, the user class. And then we do double colon, and then we want to call the construct method. So in here, we can pass through the username and the email because we take those in right here, username and email. So we pass them through to the parent constructor. 
So inside the parent constructor, when it's called, it sets those properties. So now we have the level set and this set right here. So if I save this now and try this, it should all work. Refresh and we get a fatal error. It says call to undefined method user construct. Okay, I've spelled it incorrectly. So let's call that construct, not construct. Save that and refresh. And now it all works. Awesome. So this, my friends, is how we can inherit from a parent class. We say the new class extends from whatever parent you want to inherit from. Then we can define any new properties or methods inside this class. We can also define a new construct function, which is going to override the parent one. But then if we still want to run the parent one, we can do that using this line of code right here. Parent, double colon, underscore, underscore, construct, and then pass in the original arguments that this constructor needs right here. So now we've created that subclass. In the next video, I want to talk about how we can override properties and methods inside this subclass. We've already seen the first case of that right here where we override the construct function, but I'm going to show you some more examples in the next video.